One of the most shocking and notorious queens ever to have ruled over England was the eldest daughter of Henry VIII, who was known as Bloody Mary. She was the queen who burned over 200 people at the stake for their differing religious beliefs, and Mary's short but brief reign was one which was very turbulent. She would reverse the huge religious changes her brother Edward VI and father made, and this led people to be rather confused, and they did not know where they stood. But Mary's reign was not long, and many believed she would never be a ruling queen. However, Mary suffered with a lot of severe health problems in her life, and these eventually contributed to her death. Mary I died at the age of 42 inside of St James's Palace, and Mary was then buried inside of a burial vault in Westminster Abbey, close to where her grandparents, Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, were buried. But the burial vault of Mary I was disturbed a number of times, and shockingly, when it was last opened, what those people found was shocking. Mary I, despite being the ruthless monarch who burned many people at the stake, was a woman who suffered a great deal with her health and well-being. She was a young woman who had many problems that led to the royal doctors and physicians, considering that she would not live very long, and the physicians believed she would die before she would ever become queen or be considered to have been a martyr. She was living in the 16th century, a time where there were huge disease outbreaks plaguing England. Mary suffered with a number of serious swellings in her stomach when she became queen, and she believed she was pregnant, but no child ever came. And today it's considered that she suffered from ovarian or uterine cancer. But in 1558, Mary I made preparations for her death, and she claimed that she wanted Philip II to act as the regent if she ever had a child, but this would not be popular, as Philip was hated. There were never any children ever born to Mary I, and with this she then had to consider who her successor would be, and she turned to her great rival, Elizabeth, her half-sister, who would go on to become Queen Elizabeth I. In 1558, there was a huge amount of influenza and flu, which was causing chaos across England, and it was killing people at the rate of which the Black Death was. The flu lingered on and it would claim its victims over time. But Mary tried to avoid the disease, but in the summer of 1558 she was suffering with depression and a huge lack of sleep. It was said in August that Mary had dropsy and she had a fever which was low, and because of this she was considered on death's door. Because of this, Mary moved from Hampton Court Palace to St James's Palace, and she did have a high fever, bouts of dizziness and confusion, and also severe headaches. Mary also went blind, and she did recover a bit. However, with her growing depression and severe fever, she continued to go downhill. In the October of 1558, many of Mary's advisers had to make a decision, and the Privy Council then convinced the Queen to make her will, and they considered their own positions, and many began to schmooze Elizabeth in preparation for Mary's death and they wanted a role inside of her new government. But in her final days, Mary did name Elizabeth her successor, and she went blind as her servants began to pray for her soul. She had bizarre dreams, and in the morning of the 17th of November 1558, she had a final mass said for her, and at around 4am she died peacefully. The servants believed she had fallen asleep, but she died, and the doctors confirmed her death. The funeral service was then planned and it was to take place at Westminster Abbey. Mary I's reign over England was very short, but she made history being the first queen to reign in her own right after being crowned during a coronation. And she was interred inside of Westminster Abbey. Her body was taken to Westminster in a large procession. On top of the coffin was a like-like effigy of Mary, which was wearing coronation robes, and it had her orb and scepter on the coffin also. It was Mary's show of royal power and importance, even in her death. And despite the fact she was a very unpopular monarch, the funeral procession then made its way into Westminster Abbey. But Mary was then buried inside of the north side of Henry VII's Lady Chapel. There, today is little that marks the reign or life of Mary I in her death and demise. 
there's no funeral effigy or tomb. There isn't a grand memorial either, just a small stone that says that Mary I was buried there. But in the 19th century, the tomb of Mary I was broken into and opened. However, one thing to consider is that this was not the first time it was broken into. Elizabeth I, following her death, was initially buried inside of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York's tomb, but James I, her successor, then ordered the exhumation of Elizabeth so that she could be buried in the same vault as Mary. Because of this, Mary's coffin was moved, and actually, in an act of disgrace against the former Catholic Queen, Elizabeth I's coffin was placed directly on top of Mary's to signal that Elizabeth was much more important than Mary. But in 1880, Arthur Stanley, the Dean of Westminster, encountered the burial vault of Mary I, and he wrote an account on what he saw. He found the coffins of Mary and Elizabeth, and he recorded what he saw, and he said, The excavations, however, had almost laid bare the wall immediately at the eastern end of the monument of Elizabeth, and through a small aperture a view was obtained into a long, narrow van lit immediately beneath her tomb. It was instantly evident that it enclosed two coffins and two only, and it could not be doubted that these contained Elizabeth and her sister Mary, the upper one larger and more distinctly shaped in the form of the body, like that of Mary Queen of Scots, rested on the other. There was no disorder or decay except that the centering wood had fallen over the head of Elizabeth's coffin and that the wood case had crumbled away at the sides and had drawn away part vault of the decaying lid. No coffin plate could be discovered, but fortunately the dim light fell on a fragment of the lid slightly carved. This led to a further search, and the original inscription was discovered. There was a Tudor badge, a full double rose, deeply but simply incised in outline on the middle of the cover, on each side the August initial E, R and below, the memorial date 1603. The coffin lid had been further decorated with narrow modelling panelling and the coffin case was of inch elm, but the ornamental lid contained the inscription and panelling was of fine oak, half an inch thick, laid on the inch elm cover. The whole was covered in red silk velvet, of which much remained attached to the wood, and it had covered not only the sides and ends, but also the ornamented oak covers, as though the bare wood had not been thought rich enough without the velvet. The sight of this secluded and narrow tomb thus compressing in the closest grasp the two Tudor sisters, partners of the same throne and grave, sleeping in the hope of resurrection. The solemn majesty of the great queen thus reposing, as can hardly be doubted by her own desire on her sister's coffin, was the more impressive from the contrast of its quiet calm with the confused and multitudinous decay of the Stuart vault, and of the fullness of its tragic interest with the vacancy of the deserted spaces which had been here hard to explored in the other parts of the chapel. The vault was then immediately closed. But still today, the death and life of Mary I is not the most celebrated inside of Westminster Abbey, and Elizabeth I's tomb, which sits above Mary's body, is grand and ornate. Mary I was never given her own burial vault, unlike many other kings and queens buried inside of Westminster. Her vault is not filled with the coffins of others, and still today it's believed only her and Elizabeth's coffin lay in the vault. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.